Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name is Kathy Bodet, um, and I am so happy to welcome you to our community this morning. Um, how many of you have seen the TED Talk, uh, How Great Leaders Inspire Action? couple of you. It has been really important to me in helping me understand how to talk about my work. Basically, it's convinced me that I need to start by clarifying why, speaking from the heart, and then talk about how. Um, how is it that I approach my work and only then talk about what it is that I do? I have actually always been very clear in my own heart about why I do the work I do. but somehow I kind of kept it quiet. I mean, I knew that I believe that every single child deserved to be held to high expectations for what they could learn, and that I wanted to live in a world where all students thrive. However, it seemed that I noticed I was really often leading with what it was that I did, and that is the data-wise improvement process. It's an eight-step process collaboratively designed by teachers, principals, and researchers for collaborative data inquiry to improve teaching and learning for everyone. It's got three phases, prepare, inquire, and act. And teachers have told us that they really appreciate that it's about not using data as like a hammer to beat teachers down, but instead as a platform on which they can identify and solve their own problems. When we brought DataWise out into the world and looked at how it was being received, we saw that it was working wonderfully in some places, but in others, not so well. And we tried to figure out what made the difference and realized that the schools that use collaborative data inquiry for good were those who approached it in a certain way. How they did the work mattered. They actually had their improvement cycle rest on a firm foundation. Um, and we realized that that foundation was a set of habits of mind that we call the ACE habits of mind. Uh, they were so powerful for the adults that we worked with that I'm going to share them with you this morning. So the first habit is A. Um, it's a, a shared commitment to action, assessment, and adjustment. The second is C, intentional collaboration. And the third is E, a relentless focus on evidence. The best way to understand these habits is actually by thinking about the bad habit that you're trying to break when you're cultivating this. So for A, um, there's actually two bad habits. On one side of the, um, the spectrum is analysis paralysis, constantly calling for more data without actually doing anything about it. Or on the other side of the spectrum, just forging ahead without um, realizing that you might need to act and adjust, sort of letting inertia or maybe the shame of something not working take over. For intentional collaboration, the bad habit is that magical thinking that by simply putting people in a room together, a group is going to become a team. Not acknowledging that actually there could be some pretty important power dynamics at play and that really to develop trust, somebody's got to do some deliberate work to set things up. The relentless focus on evidence opposite is focusing on adjectives and on opinions. This is going from your gut without taking the time to bring others along to share how it is that you got, came to the conclusions that you've reached. So it turns out these habits don't necessarily come naturally to everyone. And so as educators, we realized we needed to offer some strategies for how to develop these habits. And this morning, I'm going to go through um, three examples that uh, give you a sense of what the strategies can look like. So the first one, for a quick cycles of feedback, um, we find that the plus delta protocol is enormously helpful. Um, what it does is it's just five minutes at the end of a lesson or a meeting where you take time to pause and ask people, what worked well about this meeting? And then a delta, what would you want to change? 
it leads to really powerful iterative cycles of continuous improvement. For expectations for effective meetings, we developed a checklist that you can use as you're planning a meeting um, so that to be sure that you can check off that you've actually built in the best practices for meetings and that you're set up to use your time well. And for staying grounded in evidence, we find that the ladder of inference is a really powerful model. Because you see, we're always surrounded by um, a, a sort of a sea of data. And you can think of there being a ladder that lifts you out of all the data that's available and gets you to a place where you do something about it. Um, so for example, you might have someone on your team um, who selects some data from all of the school data that's available, uh, perhaps noticing that a particular subgroup is not performing as well on an assessment. Um, they may add an interpretation and say, well, that group is not really capable of um, challenging work. That may uh, sort of hit you wrong in thinking that, well, there's a lot of interpretations that could have been drawn from that same data. They may draw a conclusion that the group needs to be held separate and suggest an action that there be a lower tracked class. If you've got the ladder of inference that everyone on your team is using, you can kind of in a lighthearted way say, hey, when you made that suggestion about um, uh, look, creating a lower track, where were you on the ladder of inference? And just sort of ask them to walk you through their thinking. And you know that your team is really embracing this tool when you find people catching themselves and being like, oh, whoa, I'm high on my ladder of inference. Let me walk down and take you through my thinking and let's look at the evidence together. So this real focus on how and giving people strategies for how has been enormously important for the DataWise project. Um, this sort of together with um, really being very explicit that our why is so that all students thrive has helped the DataWise project to reach educators from Australia to Brazil, from Chile to China, and across the United States in a lower, um, in preschool settings all the way through um, university education. But enough about me. Let's talk about you for a minute. So you already know why you're here. Your purpose, that beautiful statement of purpose that you wrote, earned you a spot in this tent. And there's no way you're going to avoid the what of your education. This week is going to be devoted to you figuring out what you're going to be studying while you're here. But I just want to give you a moment to think about how you plan on approaching your time as a student while you're here. And so to do that, I'd like to just use my last minute to give you a chance to reflect and commit to something that you would like to do about your how. All right, so how this is going to work is that um, in just a moment, not right now, I'm going to invite you to stand up, another chance to stretch your legs, and turn to the person next to you. Uh, exchange names, and then the first person is going to have just 30 seconds to share um, from this list of habits, what's one that might speak to you, and how might it affect how you take your time here as a student. Uh, the other person is just going to be completely silent, giving you the gift of listening for that 30 seconds, and then you will have a chance to, um, to switch. Um, you're going to see a switch roll, so keep an eye out for that. And then the second person's going to speak, again, choosing a habit that speaks to you and how it might affect your time here as a student. And then you're going to see a sign that tells you to please sit down because we've got to let the next person on and you don't want to be the last person standing. All right, so at this time, please stand up and your 30 seconds is about to begin. Wow, <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, the power of hearing you all speaking about and committing to your why um, just gave me chills. Um, I wish you well as you um, focus on your why and you think about your how. Um, and I really appreciate you taking the time to engage in just 60 seconds of intentional collaboration on your first day here at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Thank you.